Hi, welcome to my channel. I thought I'd do a video on Irish wedding traditions. Some of these are still popular and practiced today. Some of these are quite uncommon, but they all have a lot of history and old Irish wedding traditions that go back hundreds or even thousands of years. So here's my top 10. Number one, hand fasting. This is where couples would have their hands tied together with a rope or a ribbon. And that's literally where the phrase tying the knot comes from, from hand fasting, tying their hands together. And um, this tradition started, it was first documented in Ireland in 7,000 BC. So 9,000 years ago, um, they were doing hand fasting. But back then it wasn't actually to start a marriage, it was to start a trial marriage. So couples would come and have their hands bound together and then they'd live together, they'd consummate their relationship, they'd basically live as a married couple. But then after a year, they could make the decision, do they want to stay together? or do they want to separate? So if they decided they want to stay together, they would be officially married. And if they decided not to, then they'd break up and find new partners. So back then it was more of an engagement ritual. And nowadays it's performed during an actual wedding ceremony and it does symbolize the couple coming together in marriage. So um, the actual symbol of hand fasting has changed um, in the last 9,000 years. <laughs> It's a beautiful way to symbolize a union and it's remained hugely popular in Ireland and in other places. I know Kate Middleton and Prince William did a ritual that symbolized hand fasting at their own wedding ceremony. Number two, the magic handkerchief. This is a really sweet tradition. I absolutely love this. Basically, a bride on her wedding day would carry around a handkerchief, a lace or a linen handkerchief, and she'd either carry it in her bouquet or down her sleeve or somewhere incorporated in her dress. And this handkerchief was to um, bring about good luck with fertility. So um, after her wedding day, she would keep it. And then on the christening of her firstborn child, she would sew it into a bonnet for the baby to wear on their special day. And this magic handkerchief is supposed to be passed down generation to generation. And um, I absolutely, I think it's such a sweet tradition. I didn't know about this tradition, but my grandmother did give me one of her old handkerchiefs to carry with me on my wedding day. And um, I wore it um, just down the front of my wedding dress. And um, it was just really nice to have, for me it was just kind of um, something from my grandmother close to my heart on my wedding day. But I didn't know the whole thing about making it into a bonnet for your baby's first christening. I would have loved to have done that. But um, I do still have the handkerchief and I plan to give it to my daughter on her wedding day. So I'm keeping it um, in a special place. So maybe she can do the whole baby bonnet thing um, if she has kids in the future. Number three, the child of Prague. So this tradition became popular in the 18th century and it's still hugely popular today. A lot of brides still do this um, tradition today. Basically, it's a little statue of baby Jesus dressed in elaborate robes and it is supposed to um, keep away the rain for your wedding day and give you sun and good weather on your big day. There's a lot of debate over exactly where you're supposed to put the child of Prague, um, but I think traditionally they say the night before your wedding, um, you're supposed to put it in the garden of the bride's house in a bush facing the house. But some people say you're supposed to have it facing away from the house. Some people say you're supposed to bury it up to the neck or bury it all the way. Some people say um, you're supposed to take off the head. <laughs> Um, some people put it in the bride's hallway with money underneath as a offering um, but brides swear by it and they insist that this is the reason the child of Prague is the reason they had good weather on their wedding day I know Pierce Brosnan um, has said that he believes the child of Prague was successful on his wedding day he got married in Ireland and he said he put this little statue under a bush on the west side of the garden where he was getting married so worked for him <laughs> number four Mi Namala. Mi Namala translates to the month of honey, and this ritual would last for one full moon. And this is actually where the term honeymoon comes from. We all know what a honeymoon is nowadays, and it's hugely popular. You know, after the wedding, the bride and groom go off on a holiday together, where they spend a week or a month or whatever, and um, spending time together. But the origins of this tradition are very different from what they are today. So back hundreds of years ago, the honeymoon actually meant that for one month following their wedding, the couple would be alone together, they'd stay together, and every night they'd drink this mead, this um, sweet tasting honey wine that was gifted to them by their wedding guests. And this honey wine was supposed to be good for virility and fertility, and hopefully the bride would fall pregnant within one full moon of her wedding day. So one month, one full moon of honey wine, and that is where honeymoon comes from. So still practiced today, but in a very different way from where it 
originates in early Irish times. Number five, a lucky horseshoe. So I think everyone around the world um, knows that a horseshoe is a symbol of good luck. So traditionally, Irish brides would carry around a horseshoe with them on their wedding day to bring extra luck to their marriage. And um, they'd carry around with them on their wedding day, always facing up so that the good luck from the day falls into the horseshoe. And then the groom would put it up in their new marital home, usually over a door frame, and it would keep the good luck um, coming into the horseshoe. And it was a really bad thing if it ever was put upside down because the good luck would fall out. But back in the olden days, the shoes had to be iron, which were really heavy. And um, the brides would have them sewn into their underskirt of their wedding dress. And it was also even luckier if the horseshoe was worn because it would bring with it powerful energy from the horse that had worn it. So um, these days, brides don't really wanna have an old worn iron horseshoe sewn onto their wedding dress and have to carry it around so heavy. So nowadays to incorporate the good luck horseshoe, um, brides can have you know a symbol of a horseshoe on their bouquet or um, you know sewn into their garter or something, or they can have a wooden replica. Another nice way of incorporating the horseshoe into your wedding, and this is done in a lot of ceremonies these days, um, just after the wedding ceremony, the bride is presented with a horseshoe from a child, usually a flower girl or something, and that's supposed to give her the good luck. So, um, the lucky horseshoe. <laughs> Number six, the clatter ring. So the clatter ring, I think everyone knows the clatter ring. It's a huge symbol of Irishness and it originated in the 17th century. And it's a ring that depending on what way you wear it, it shows where you are in your relationship. So the symbol of it is two hands holding a heart with a crown on top. And the two hands symbolize friendship. The heart symbolizes love and the crown symbolizes loyalty. So um, that's, that's what it represents. The rules are if you wear it um, on your right hand facing outwards, like with the point of the heart facing out, then that means you are single and looking for love. If you turn around and point it the other way, pointing into your heart, it means you're in a relationship. When you get engaged, you move it to your left hand with the heart pointing out. And then when you get married, it's turned around. And pointing in. So there's four different ways to wear it and um, that represent the four different stages of your relationship. So the clatter ring is still hugely popular but these days it's not commonly used as a wedding or engagement ring but when you get married you still are supposed to turn it around and um, fun fact that very famous statue in Disneyland of Walt Disney holding Mickey Mouse's hand Walt Disney is actually wearing a clatter ring in that. So apparently he and his wife, when they were in Ireland, they got matching clatter rings and put them on and never took them off um, for the rest of their married lives. Um, but he's actually wearing it the wrong way. He's wearing it on his right hand facing out, which means he's single and looking for love. But we won't judge him for that. <laughs> Number seven, sixpence in the shoe. So everyone knows that rhyme, something old, something new, something borrowed, something blue and a sixpence in her shoe. But a lot of people don't know that last line of it, but um, that is the old traditional rhyme and it did have that last line about a sixpence in her shoe. So a bride would traditionally wear an Irish sixpence in her shoe, in her left shoe, and this would bring good luck for a wealthy and prosperous marriage. They're actually, sixpences aren't in circulation in Ireland anymore, but you can still buy them just for the purpose of wearing them in your wedding shoe on your wedding day. Um, it's not that common, but a lot of Irish brides still do it and still swear by it. And it's very important for them to keep this tradition. And then um, nowadays though, a lot of brides prefer to glue it to the bottom of their shoe or tape it to the bottom of their shoe because it's not as comfortable to wear it on the inside. I actually did this tradition on my own wedding day, um, but it wasn't Irish sixpence. I think it was like whatever coin I could find, like, I don't know, 10 cent coin or something. And um, I don't think it lasted long because I was wearing open toed shoes. So I think it flew out in no time at all. But I tried, I tried to represent that old tradition and the Irish sixpence in the shoe. Number eight, the makeup bell. This is another tradition that I think is so sweet. I really like it, but it kind of has a dark history. Basically, you know, traditionally after a wedding in a church, the church bells ring and they ring to symbolize the driving away of evil spirits and to remind the couple of the vows they've just taken. But in penal times in Ireland, this wasn't allowed. If you don't know what penal times were in Ireland, it was basically 
a time when Catholics were penalized for practicing their religion. So Catholic wedding ceremonies and masses and things were done usually in secret, so they couldn't be doing any loud bell ringing. This was in around the 16th and 17th centuries. So because they couldn't have the bells ringing, um, the couple was usually gifted a little bell, um, like a little handheld bell that would symbolize um, the church bells. And this bell would be kept in the marital home. And it was called the makeup bell because if ever the couple were in a fight or an argument and they just wanted it to end, one of them could pick up the bell and ring it and it would remind each other of their vows just like the church bells would have done and that's a truce then they're not allowed to fight anymore. Most of the penal laws ended in Ireland around the 19th century and um, so Catholics could get married in church again, they could ring the bells but um, the makeup bell is still today a popular gift for um, Irish weddings. Number nine, the Irish wedding coin. So the Irish wedding coin is a very old tradition that a lot of couples still use in their ceremonies today. Basically, the groom gifts the wife a silver coin, um, usually just after the ring exchange, and this is to represent that he will share with her all of his worldly possessions. And um, the line he says with it is, I give you this as a token of all I possess. And these days, it's um, more common for the bride and groom to both exchange um, coins because, you know, women work these days and have their own income these days. So they both share with each other all that they possess. And it's good luck if when they're exchanging coins, it's good luck if the coins clink, it means that they're going to be blessed with children. And you can get these coins engraved with your initials and your wedding date and you get these in jewelers. It's still hugely popular. And um, basically, the silver coin is supposed to be an heirloom for generations and the mother is supposed to hand this coin onto her eldest born son on his wedding day and he gifts it to his bride. So, and then it goes down from generation to generation. And so it's a really sweet tradition, the Irish wedding coin. <laughs> Number 10, ring warming. This is another old tradition that I absolutely love. It's not so common these days, but in ancient Ireland, um, the bride and groom's wedding rings would be passed around to all the guests um, so they could bestow on it their blessings or prayers or good wishes for the bride and groom. So during the ceremony, um, the priest or whoever's performing the ceremony would um, ask the rings to be passed around and it's passed from guest to guest and they say a silent, whatever they want to on the rings, warm up the rings and pass them on to the next person. So by the time it reaches, it goes back to the bride and groom. These rings are full of good energy and positive vibes from all of their loved ones. And then they perform the, the ring exchange. And I just love that. I think that is so sweet and a great way to include all your guests in your ceremony. And as I said, it's not that common these days. I've only seen it at one ceremony. And the funny thing is, that ceremony was actually in New York. So um, I've actually never seen it in Ireland, but it has its roots in old Irish history. So that's it. They are my top 10 Irish wedding traditions. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more, please subscribe. And thanks for watching. Bye.